We've been using our Zamp Obsidian Solar for about 10 months now, and people are asking how we like it, and was it worth the cost? Let me start by saying we rarely have hookups. We really like to camp off the beaten path, and having the solar gives us the flexibility to camp just about anywhere we want without needing hookups. It also frees us from using that generator very often. Really the only thing we use the generator for anymore is the air conditioner. The biggest advantage is that we can keep our batteries charged up from the sun, not be a slave to the RV parks with hookups. I've been really and pleasantly surprised at how great these panels work at effectively keeping our battery charged and therefore keeping our equipment charged. Right now, we only have one AGM battery, and these panels do a fantastic job of keeping that AGM battery charged. The two things that I really want to have available are the furnace and the water heater. Those are really important to me. While they both run on propane, they also require power. The battery in the trailer also powers the TV. It keeps power to the refrigerator, the outlets for the USB chargers, and the lights. And that's important to me because it keeps the camera gear charged. Although the refrigerator primarily operates on propane when off the grid, um, it does require some, a small amount of electricity for the solid state panel that controls the temperature. So we need it for that too. I'll be honest, we really haven't camped that much in the shade. But when we do, it seems like there's enough filtered lights to help keep the battery topped off. Even when we've had partially shaded sites, the Zamp Obsidian solar panels have kept our battery charged enough so that we had all the power that we needed for our trailer. Um, we did have to run the uh, generator one time to recharge the battery because the refrigerator inadvertently got switched over to 12 volts, which runs the battery down in a hurry. So when we got to camp, the battery was dead. Other than that, we haven't really had any problems charging the battery and keeping the battery charged. Our 12 volt AGM battery will not run the roof air conditioner. That requires 120 volt AC and so we just use the Honda generator for that. Yeah, we have the Honda EU2200i companion. We could use the generator as a backup if we did need to camp in the shade, but so far we haven't had to. Doug installed the system, but I imagine if you had the system installed, the installation would be similar with the ZAMP system or any other type of system that you would have installed. Now the ZAMP Obsidian system is more expensive than some other systems, like for example, Renogy. So I'm sure you're wondering why we didn't go with the Renogy system and decided to go with the ZAMP system instead. There are a couple reasons why we like the ZAMP system over the Renogy system, and Doug will tell you why. Okay, one of the big selling points for me was these panels. They're the very low profile, so actually you can hardly tell there's solar panels on the vehicle from the ground. So they're aerodynamic and low profile. Also, they, the dimensions happen to fit exactly so we could get three of them on the roof of the casita. So we originally started out with two panels, but then Doug, and, and let me just say that we did great with two panels. We didn't really need the third panel, but it's just kind of nice. And eventually when we do go to the lithium battery, it'll be nice to have the extra panel. The ZAMP panels look a lot better, especially from the road. Now that we have the awning, you can hardly even tell that they're there, and we really like that. That really cumbersome look of big panels on top of your RV, I don't think is a very good look. Yeah, I think they look a, a little bit better than the larger panels with the big uh, aluminum frame on a small trailer. On a large trailer, you don't really notice the panels that much, but on a small trailer like a Casita with the rounded off sides, it's pretty noticeable. Um, also, we like the fact that they're American-made. So if you've seen the Renogy panels, you know that they stick out like a sore thumb. It's really obvious that they're there, and these ZAMP panels with the low profile, you can't even tell from the ground that they're there, especially now that we have the awning. Well, it makes it a little bit more theft-resistant, too, if, if the criminals can't see the panels as easily. Since we went with the low-profile panel, you're probably wondering why we didn't just get the flat, flexible panels. Um, one of the reasons we didn't go with the flexible flat panels is the longevity doesn't seem to be quite as good as a glass panel, and uh, a lot of the reviews, the glass panels seem to hold up better over time. So some of the videos that we've seen, those flexible panels have actually broken and they wear over time. They're just not as durable as the glass panels. And when you put them on top of a moving vehicle that's shaking and that causes stress and tension on those panels and they just can't handle it. We haven't had any problems at all with the ZAMP panels. 
They're durable and they've held up to the shaking and the movement on the road from the Casita trailer. The flexible panels are delicate and they really can't take much abuse. They're super easy to break and they don't hold up on a moving vehicle over time. The other thing about Zampa is after doing our research, they seem to be the top of the line when it comes to solar panels at this time. They really make a high quality product. Both Zamp and Renogy are U.S. companies, but we felt like the Zamp product was a better product, a higher quality product. I think you can't go wrong either way, but we just felt like Zamp was better. So you may also be wondering why we didn't go with the suitcase style panels. Yeah, so the suitcase panels that you can just deploy at camp, those are great because you can aim them towards the sun, whichever position the sun is. But then you have to worry about them disappearing when you're not watching. So like for us, we like to go out and hike during the day. I didn't want to have to put those panels away to prevent the theft and then miss all that sunlight hours while we're out hiking. So this way we don't have to put anything away. It's just there all the time. So you might be a person that just hangs around camp and maybe you don't go off and leave your RV. And so the suitcase panels might work for you. But the thing about the suitcase panels is that you have to babysit them all day so that they're facing the sun in order to get the most sunlight and therefore energy out of the panels. So if that's something that you feel like you want to do, you're at camp all day long and you don't mind babysitting the panels and changing them, then they might be okay for you. But that's not what we wanted to do. If we are at camp, we don't want to babysit solar panels. And if we're not at camp, then we don't want to have them stolen. Also, we have limited storage. As you know, if you have a Casita trailer, there's limited storage inside. I'd rather put other things in the bed of the truck besides uh, suitcase panels that take up a lot of room. I mean, they take up as much room. I can bring our propane fire pit instead of bringing suitcase panels. So it's not to say that the rooftop panels aren't any work at all. You still have to keep them clean for maximum efficiency. Yeah, so what I do, I do it on a ladder since the roof of the casita is not really meant to climb on. You can get a ladder next to it and use a squeegee and a sponge. And also while I'm up there, I check to make sure the adhesive mounts are still tight since we didn't drill any holes in the trailer to install the panels. So Doug did install an additional panel. Originally we just had two, which was fine for our needs, definitely met our needs. But he did install another panel maybe about... Probably four months ago. About four months ago. Yeah, and that panel, it doesn't work as efficiently as the first two I installed because it's kind of right between the uh, roof vent and the air conditioner. So it doesn't get full sun as much as the other two panels, but it's still something to add to the output of all three. So you get the most bang for your buck with the first two panels that we had, but it's nice to have the additional panel because we will eventually add a lithium battery and that additional panel will help keep the lithium battery charged. For the camping that we've done so far, we haven't needed the third panel. However, we are planning some longer trips. This year we're planning a trip across the U.S. and then next year to Alaska when we will potentially need the extra panel when we purchase the lithium battery. I'm sure that most people could get by with just the two panels like we did for six months and not get the third panel, but it is a nice addition for our situation. And plus, it's good to know that since we have a small trailer, our casita, that you can fit three of these Zamp Obsidian panels on your roof. If you have a small trailer or a fiberglass trailer that has less roof space, it's good to know that you can fit three of these Zamp Obsidian panels on the roof of the small fiberless trailer. Of the two of us, I'm the more financially conservative one. So originally I was questioning the costs of these panels. We paid $831.19 for the system with the two panels. The additional panel cost about $350. So that's a total of about $1,180 and some change. However, prices have gone up since then. Yes, if you'd like to purchase the same SAMP panels and system that we have, there's a link in the video description. We receive a very small commission if you use the link below. This helps us defray the cost of making these videos. If you found this video helpful, but you don't plan on making a purchase at this time, you can buy me a coffee. Doug doesn't drink coffee, but you can buy me a coffee and there's a link in the video description below. And just so that everyone knows, this is, we didn't get endorsed or sponsored by Zamp. We paid full price for the panels, but that's just what we chose. 
So we made a video on the installation of the ZAMP panels. If you want to check that out, it is something that you could do yourself. And he explains or really shows you how to do that installation. So if you'd like to see how Doug installed these panels, check out this video. If you'd like to see what equipment we use when we're boondocking, check out this video.